I'm here in uh, Boss Alley on Thanksgiving and I wanted to wish all you guys, hope you guys had a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we're taking the day off here, we're not working on any projects, we're just stuffing our faces and uh, enjoying family and good times and I hope uh, you did too. So while I was here, I thought uh, I would get a little video of my kid brother. My kid brother is uh, yellow, he's got uh, black stripes on him. and. Um, He's been kicking around my whole life, um, and I thought it would be a good opportunity while I was here to uh, get a little video of that and uh, show you guys uh, what makes him special. Um, they only made him for one year, 1971, and they only made him uh, in limited quantities. They made 1,806, and I'm not sure exactly what number he is, but... Uh, but he's definitely rare. A lot of you guys have probably never seen one, or you think you have seen one, but you haven't, uh, because they're they're not uh, the most popular muscle car of the era. Uh, the time frame from '69 to '71. You know, there's a lot of great cars to choose from. Uh, this is just one of them, and it was really the last true muscle car before the gasoline crunch that happened in the, in the '70s, early '70s. And it was Ford's last, last Trans Am car that they built for the racing circuit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some video here. It's uh, like I said, this car. I've been taking car, care of this car uh, my whole life. My dad, uh, you know, bought this car new. It's a one owner, uh, one owner car. Uh, it was bought brand new in 1971. Um, the story goes that. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force at the time, and he had actually ordered a 70 Boss 302. Um, and the 302 that he had ordered uh, got sold to someone else, sold out from under him. So when he went to pick the car up, they said, we don't have your 302, but what we have is something that you might be interested in. And at first he wasn't. And um, after he took a look at the car and drove it, he, he decided that this was the right choice, and it's probably the uh, the best investment he ever made. My brother and I were talking about this today, and uh, my, my actual physical brother, my real brother, uh, one, of, one of my brothers, uh, we were talking about this today, and uh, how it was probably the, one of the greatest investments anyone's ever made. But uh, enough to do. Let me, uh, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Right, it's bold, it's grabber yellow. It's sleek, it's sexy, it's fast, it's torquey. It is the Boss 351 Mustang. You won't see very many of these. And it is our 71 Boss. Well, it's really my dad's 71 Boss, but it's everybody in the family we've all uh, grown up with the car we've taken it to shows we've washed it we've waxed it we've armor all the tires on it we've pulled transmissions rear ends uh, you know we've uh, cared for the car its whole life and uh, they don't get much nicer than this you may see other Boss 351's that have been restored you may see other cars that have been repainted. You may see other ones with a slightly different interior color. My dad hates the color, hates the interior, but uh, we like it. I think I like it more than he does. Nope, I, can't, I still can't close doors. My dad reminded me uh, after I shot the video here that this interior combination is one of only two in existence. Grabber yellow with the with the ginger interior. Only two in existence. True ram air induction hood. 
actually seals against the top of the air filter housing and ducks the ducks the air at, at high pressure into the air filter for a few more horsepower at high speeds. One of the last real pony cars of the that era. The next Mustangs to come out after this were Mustang 2s. Um, you might get the Mach 1 for 72 through 74 I think with the 351 Windsor. Uh, the, the Boss 351 is the 351 Cleveland motor. The uh, Cleveland in my dad's car has been uh, warmed up a little bit. It does have a uh, bigger cam in it. Uh, it's running headers. Uh, it still has the Autolite car, but the car's been worked over. Um, he's kept all the original parts and uh, will be at some point probably replacing some of the higher performance stuff back with the original parts. Uh, but over the years, he's played around with different things at uh, different times on the car. Uh, but uh, it's mostly stock. Now these are not the original Magnum 500 wheels that came on the car. These are a set uh, my dad had to buy at a later time when he wanted to go back to all original with the car. Uh, because shortly after he bought the car, he had put some Kragers on it. And I think I'm going to post a picture here uh, <laughs> of my dad with some nice mutton chops and some Kragers on, uh, on the boss here. Now a lot of guys will probably wonder what's the difference. What's the difference between the, the Mach 1 and the Boss 351? I've heard this my whole life. Um, my dad and I were just joking about that because as soon as I post this video somebody's going to hop on here and say, oh it's a Mach 1. And no, it's not a Mach 1. Uh, the Mach 1 was made multiple years. Um, you could have bought these cars uh, you know, into 74 all the way I think. Um, and the Mach 1 was available 71 and 72, I believe. I'm not sure about 73 because I never really cared about the Mach 1. Um, the Boss 351 has, uh, is a one-year only 1,806 cars. Mach 1s, they made hundreds of thousands of them. Uh, the Mach 1s had a different paint scheme on the hood. Uh, as you can see on the Boss 351, almost the entire hood is flat black. It has a, a small edge of paint all the way around it, whereas a Mach 1... Uh, has large paint sections here that follow into the ram air duct. Uh, Mach 1's typically had painted front bumpers whereas the Boss has a chrome front bumper. Um, there's a few other other subtle differences here. Both cars could come with uh, with louvers, rear window louvers and uh, the wing uh, which was optional on both Mach 1's and Boss 351's. The Boss 351 is a flat valance here where the gas filler is. This is completely flat whereas a Mach 1 has a honeycombed uh, honeycombed plasticky uh, valance here. Uh, Mach 1's also have cutouts in the lower roll pan here um, underneath the bumper whereas the Boss they didn't have time for that on the Boss 351 so it's just plain and flat and sleek. Uh, the car was built, you know, as a as a go fast car. It wasn't built to be a Hollywood cruiser. It wasn't built to, uh, uh, you know, take your take your Hollywood girlfriend uh, uh, out to Studio 41. This was um, a car to, that you took to the racetrack. This was the car that you took to the drag strip. This was the Trans Am car that you, you know, uh, threw window nets on on the weekends, some slicks on it, and you went after Dan Gurney on the racetrack. So this is the uh, 351 Cleveland uh, motor, the uh, hemispherical Boss motor that was put into the Boss 351 uh, with the tall aluminum valve covers, uh, aluminum intake manifold. Uh, you know, it was it was built uh, to go fast. It wasn't built to pass emissions. There's no smog pump. The the only emissions equipment on the Boss 351 at all is a PCV valve. Whereas if you looked at a 68 or a 69, even uh, Cobra jet motor, uh, you would find all of the all of the smog equipment uh, typical of an early 70s uh, vehicle. My dad spent a, a lot of time uh, over the years putting the motor back to original. You know, back in the 70s, he had changed things out, different carburetor, uh, different intake manifold. Still has a bigger cam in it uh, and some headers. Mostly all stock, though.
So one of the cool things that recently uh, happened with my dad's car is uh, a couple years back there was a book that came out, a coffee table book called The Art of the Mustang. Um, book by Donald Farr and Tom Lozer. And uh, they wanted, uh, they took a few select Mustangs from out in the show world and magazine world and uh, took very specialized photographs in a pitch black warehouse. Uh, with a special camera that would capture every flaw and every curve and every body line uh, with no lighting whatsoever. Um, and one of the cars that was selected was my dad's car. And uh, it's actually the, the first photo you'll see when you open the, uh, the contents is the silhouette of my dad's car there. Um, <clears throat> as well as a few, a few pages uh, of photographs. So this is uh, Art of the Mustang. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to the uh, to Amazon where you could purchase it. Uh, the pictures in the book are beautiful, and there's some really beautiful Mustangs in uh, in this book. The most amazing part to me is that all of these pictures were taken in absolute darkness. So check it out if you're a Mustang fan. Well, guys, we're back home, and uh, <laughs> it's a good time over there at uh, my dad's house. But you know, it was hard to get any decent video. Uh, there, you know, the lighting isn't very good, and every time I'd go out into the garage to try and try and get a little video and do some audio, uh, somebody would come out. So, uh, <laughs> so I didn't, uh, I didn't get very good quality of coverage of the car, but uh, got a little bit. So I'm gonna put together what I have here, and hopefully I can put something together pretty decent. Um, if you guys are interested in the Art of the Mustang coffee book, it's a, it's a nice hard cover, high quality images. Um, the photos in the book were taken in the dark. Uh, they used a special camera and uh, the, the cars were put into this pitch black warehouse and uh, you know I don't know if they were lighted with infrared light or something crazy but somehow the, uh, the images that were taken for that book um, are like as high res as you can take. You know there's no shadows, there's no Laws. There's no uh, crazy uh, drop shadows on any of the body lines. Everything is crisp and clear and perfect because of the the, the way they photographed them. But they photographed them in the dark. Uh, interesting process. I wish I had been there for that. Uh, my dad's car. You know, it uh, it was used as a daily driver for a long time. My mom uh, uh, used to take us to school in in the Mustang. Uh, it's been bumped and bruised and shopping carts ran up against it. Uh, when I was uh, about 12 years old, I had a paper route and uh, one particular Sunday morning I loaded up my bags on my bike uh, full, of, uh, full of newspapers and they're super heavy and I leaned my bike against the driver's door on my dad's car right above the door handle just for a minute so I could go inside and grab something before I left for my paper route in the morning and uh, my, my bike slipped because of all the weight on the handlebars the bike slipped bars turned and I put a half moon scratch above that door handle uh, right on the driver's side door I was terrified I was I thought I thought my dad's gonna kill me you know I scratched the boss and uh, <laughs> You know, at the time, my dad didn't have uh, the money to repaint the car or anything. He was actually really good about uh, about not killing me over that over that scratch. You know, uh, we we kind of laughed a little bit about it tonight. He said, you know, it's in the end, it's just uh, it's just a car. It's just a you know, it's just paint. And uh, I thought that was uh, it was amazing of him at the time not to kill me. I think he reacted better than I would have. And uh, you know, I I, I probably. Uh, built it up more in my mind than uh, than it actually ended up being but he had to live with that scratch for a good 15 years before he could finally afford to blow the car apart fix all the little dings and body damage that had been done over the years it was always a very nice car 
It's always very well maintained, always waxed, always armor rolled, always covered in the garage, kept, you know, immaculate. Uh, but all of those things had added up, and he, uh, he, he wanted it perfect again. He wanted it, uh, you know, to be able to take it to shows and not have to put the little magnetic do not touch sticker over that scratch on the do above the door handle that I put in it. Uh, and he wanted to fix it. So uh, he finally was able to do a full proper uh, repaint of the car. And uh, the guy that, that painted it is a good friend of his that does, uh, does paint for... Uh, he owns a owns an auto body shop, paint shop, and he's done paint for Chip Foose and uh, uh, the Overhaul and Show, and he, he's done a lot of high end, really high end paint jobs and a lot of great automotive restorations. Uh, Kenny does some really nice work. Anyway, he uh, they blew the car apart completely, repainted it, and uh, put it all back together. When it was put back together this time, uh, they went and you know Dad replaced uh, the 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 battery with an Autolite proper Autolite battery. Went through and Autolite regulator and repainted the engine bay and went underneath and you know even even uh, rubber stamped all the OK marks and check marks for all the inspection marks that were originally on the car that had been worn off over the years of actually driving it. Um, you know it's never been a trailer queen. It's it's always been driven. Uh, for a while he drove it uh, to uh, to race days at different tracks. It's been on Laguna Seca. It's been on Riverside. It's been on Orange County Speedway. Uh, it's been on uh, uh, Willow Springs, and uh, you know my dad really, really loves that car and loves actually driving it. He's he's a driver. He's uh, you know I equate him to to Steve McQueen. He's one of those uh, one of those guys that just uh, when he gets behind the wheel, he turns into a different person, and it's uh, it's where he's meant to be. And I, I like to think that I've I, you know I've learned a lot from my dad over the years. Uh, just doing auto mechanic work and taking care of that car and, and all of our other vehicles that we've had over the years and um, I learned so much from him and I'm so thankful to him and, and uh, so thankful that I had the experience of caring for that car and, and helping him with all of these tasks over the years. At the time I, I probably didn't take it very seriously but now I can reflect back and look on those years and, and think how you know my love of cars and automotive restoration and modifications and stuff have been formed by by him and by his dad, my grandfather, who was also a car guy, and uh, helped helped me learn all the the basics and give me a good solid foundation and uh, something that I've tried to expand on from there. So I'm very grateful, uh, not only to my dad but my grandfather and everyone else in my family that uh, we we all have a have a strong love for the automobile and uh, Fords in particular. So next time we take the car out. Uh, to a car show or uh, he said if he's going to go out to a donut derelicts or some other some other day uh, day trip with the with the boss I'm going to go along and get some video of it and uh, get some driving video uh, and uh, you know hopefully maybe we'll run into a few exotics or something and do a little uh, little higher speed action maybe maybe in Mexico somewhere uh, <laughs> and see what the what the old boss still has left in her um, you know, I've, I've been in that car when there was a, a Lamborghini Countach on one side and a Ferrari, Ferrari GT350 on the other side. Um, it seems like everywhere uh, you go in that Mustang, uh, somebody's pulling up next to you looking for looking for a race, either to get shut down or uh, you know, every now and then the old boss doesn't uh, doesn't have the legs to to run beyond 135 miles an hour and some of these newer you know newer muscle cars have a whole lot more top end more more legs but uh, you know for an old four speed car uh, she runs pretty hard and, and in that sweet spot between you know top of second and uh, and top of fourth that car pulls uh, pulls like a freight train and um, you know it surprises a lot of uh, a, a lot of modern uh, modern vehicles and young guys that that like to uh, test their test their metal so anyway guys that's gonna do it for me for tonight I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving we had a wonderful time with family and uh, I wish I could have got a little more video but you know it was about spending time with them and and not so much uh, uh, doing my YouTube stuff but I tried to get what I could when I could and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did please click like and subscribe we got a lot more uh, cool content coming up 